Hello and welcome. Thanks for your interest in my project, The Beautiful Struggle. So, I believe that the basic human condition as we know it, regardless of where you happen to be born, is struggle. All of us have our own unique uh, obstacles to overcome, our own adversity in this life, uh, our own disabilities, uh, our own roadblocks, as it were. And it's my belief that the basis of photography is to express what words sometimes fail to express. So, my project, Beautiful Struggles, based on this premise that the beauty of humanity is in overcoming this human condition, this idea of struggle. I believe that the beauty of my own photography is to celebrate that victory. So this particular project is a two-part project. The first part of the project, I, I hail from landscape photography, where I capture images of these plants growing in hostile environments, uh, environments that seem impossible to survive, let alone thrive, and then I, I take these pictures of these magnificent plants and, and we're going to use those as a metaphor for kind of the human condition. The second part of the project is I take people that I find uh, along my journeys that are also struggling with this human condition, just like me and, and you, the, the viewers of this, and I ask them to look through my library of these images I've captured and identify with a particular image. So they'll pick an image from the library and then I'll photograph them with that image as an environmental portrait giving cues to them and their personality and their struggles oftentimes through that that portrait itself. So uh, I believe one of the best ways to talk about some of the work is to share some of the work and I've traveled all over the world and it never ceases to amaze me that I still find these things in every location I go to whether I'm on a beach in Aruba or whether I'm climbing in the mountains of Utah or in the deserts of Death Valley, California, I always find these plants that are doing the seemingly impossible. And when I find them, the first part is a recognition that, man, if that tree can grow on top of a rock or this shifting sand can, can house some rabbit brush, maybe I can make it through Monday. Maybe you can make it through your struggle, whether it's addiction, abuse, uh, disability, uh, other life's obstacles. And so I'm using these these plants as inspiration for the human condition. And I find them literally everywhere I go. We can find them in parking lots and sidewalks and uh, just virtually everywhere. There's a volcanic field where there's this lush green bush growing out of nowhere. And again, it just highlights the idea that difficult things are possible. And some of these you have to conclude that impossible things are possible. And if that's the case, if a flower can grow in Death Valley with no nutrients and, and no regular moisture, maybe we can overcome the things that are in front of us. So I travel around and each time I capture them, I'm trying to do, do so in a way that glorifies the struggle as it were and, and highlights the beauty of the plant and at the same time the harshness of the environment because that's really kind of how our own lives are. We're, we're trapped in this place where there's so many things that might afflict us, yet we're beautiful people inside and, and we have the power to overcome and do these incredible things. Whether it's growing out of rocks or enduring a harsh winter, life is about seasons and we all have seasons of prosperity and poverty and gosh, we all like prosperity a whole lot better, but it seems we spend much of our lives in the season of poverty, you know, the, the harsh winters, the, the droughts. Uh, and, and just enduring these hard, hard environments. So this particular piece, uh, I, I guess it makes most sense to talk about the pieces and how they connect. This piece is titled Forgotten. Uh, it's just a simple sumac tree growing out of a loading dock. It's an asphalt parking lot, a concrete loading dock, and a cinder block building. And at some point along this tree's life, it was just a tiny little seedling that somebody ignored growing out of a crack in the pavement and it got ignored long enough that it eventually turned into a tree and once it's a tree we suddenly notice oh my goodness there's a tree there and so this image was picked by this young lady Cambry. Uh, Cambry's father has been in prison most of his life her mother's a drug addict that neglected and abused her she was born hearing uh, disabled and that went undiagnosed and untreated for much of her life She's now living with her, her grandmother and her, her father's back in her life and, and he's a good man. And yet the whole time I've known Miss Cambry, she's just a little ray of sunshine, just a bright little angel 
despite everything in her way. She has no reason to be a happy child, and she is anyway. We move to this image I call Shifting Sand. Uh, it's some rabbit brush growing out of a sand dune. Many of you know that sand dunes grow and, and, and atrophy and move over time as the wind blows them. And so this sand dune that's here today might be completely gone a couple of years from now. And yet, some way, this rabbit brush has found a way to take root, to grow, and endure the, the harsh environment of that desert. That image was picked by Christy. Christy I met when she was a, a young lady. She was diagnosed with fibrosis and cirrhosis of her litter fur at only 17 years old. Uh, she has an autoimmune disorder, autoimmune hepatitis, that basically her body is trying to kill her liver. She's not an alcoholic or a drug addict of any kind. And she's gone through severe health trials in her life and continues to. She has good days and bad days, and we get together and we shoot when she has good days. And she picked this particular image, and I thought it was very appropriate for her own struggle because just like the shifting sand, her health is one of those things that she can't rely on, she can't predict. And so we've paired her in the modeling studio with, with this one. Let's go back just for a moment to Cambry. Uh, and again, there's lots of clues in the portrait of what I'm trying to convey. So the wrought iron fence isn't there just by happenstance behind. It's representative of her father being behind the bars. And, uh, her aloneness in the photo is, is how she spent her childhood. And yet, there's that unbreakable smile. This next image uh, was also shot in Death Valley, California. And you can see virtually nothing grows out there. And yet, here's this beautiful green bush in the middle of the sand dunes, in the middle of wide open nothingness. I title that Nomad. And Ashley identified with this picture. Ashley and Nate uh, I met. And such wonderful people with such a wonderful yet sad story. Ashley is a Navy veteran. She's only got one year left of nursing school. She had no family to return to after she got out of the service. She followed Nate out for a job and as he got out here to Utah for his job uh, he was immediately laid off and they'd given up everything to travel out here and so instantly they were homeless in a place they had no friends, no connections, no help and no way to get back home. So. Uh, I asked him why they don't stay at the shelter, and they explained that the shelter's full of violence and full of drugs, and it's not an environment they want to be in. And that tied into the next level of the conversation, where Ashley explained that so many people walk by and judge them. They assume they're addicts. They assume that they're lazy, too lazy to work, and, or too strung out to work. And she says, nothing could be farther than the truth. She says 90% of the people who pass her in a day, will, she'll be completely invisible to. She says, and about 5% of them are just downright cruel. They'll spit, they'll throw things, they'll, they'll yell horrible things. And Ashley's just a gal that wants to finish nursing school so she can help others. And I asked her if there was one thing she hoped the world could understand about her situation, what would it be? And she says, I just want them to understand that not everybody who's down on their luck is an addict or is lazy. She says, I'm just trying to do the best I can, and this is where I'm stuck today. And she says, very, very few people are willing to take the time to talk or help in any way. Um, kind of a, a full story on humanity. And, and here they are, uh, photographed on the street uh, with little clues. Uh, Nate's cardboard sign that he's trying to earn some money for their family with. Uh, burnt cigarette butts, you know, cold, dirty pavement, and, and the buses going by. This next image uh, I call Loner. It's a pinion pine that sits atop some red Navajo sandstone. Uh, there's virtually no rainfall where this tree is growing, but yet somehow, without soil or rain, this pinion is managing to grow, has for several years. And it's clear up on top of an overlook of Zions Canyon. Uh, it's got just an amazing view. That's one of those that kind of communicates at the same time that even though it's all alone in a hostile place, it's worth it. it. It wakes up every morning with the best view. This picture was picked by John. He identified with this because he's a self-proclaimed loner. He's a disabled Vietnam veteran. He's dying of his service-related injuries. He has severe PTSD, and yet he volunteers as a photography and Photoshop instructor in his local community. He also serves in his local church uh, 
and he's uh, actively helping other disabled veterans navigate the system of the VA and, and the problems they face. And despite his failing health, he's still reaching out to others and helping them. This next image is a uh, Again, from Death Valley, California, just a beautiful yellow blossom in the middle of what they call bad water. There's virtually nothing growing out there. Uh, the water is very, very salty. The soil is just an alluvial gravel and sand. Uh, no nutrients, no water retention. And yet here's this amazing flower. Uh, it got titled Badass because of the gal who identified with it. When I explained my project to her, I told her that I take pictures of struggling plants, and she says, that flower's not struggling at all, that flower's badass. And so meet Megan, who identified with that image. She's raising five children, aged three to 15. She's done so in this little town home behind her uh, and has done that for as long as I've known her. Her husband, Jake, did three tours in Iraq. Uh, for two of those, he left her behind pregnant and she had the baby while he was overseas. Um, with each tour, his PTSD got increasingly worse and uh, he was eventually committed to several different programs and declared incompetent. He was discharged from the military. That was his full-time job and his income. So he lost his job, and this portrait gives us clues to that. The, the condo that they're in is not being sold. They, they can no longer afford that. And Yet, despite all of this, the kids are still well-adjusted. They do well in school. Megan's serving in her church and community and she still inspires and encourages others despite all the hardship she's facing as virtually a single mom of her children plus her disabled husband. This next image is called dillweed. It grows out in what we call the playa in the desert. It's kind of a salty mud. Uh, that's where those cracks come from. It looks like it might be soft mud you could poke with your finger, but you actually have to get like a pocket knife to pry up some of these pieces. It's a it's very hard packed surface, uh, very, uh, very difficult for anything to grow in. Uh, and I call this toxic ground. This particular image was picked by Diane. She's a survivor of thyroid cancer two times, a complete removal, uh, survivor, a survivor of breast cancer, a double mastectomy. She's got lupus, diabetes, pacemaker, neuropathy, high blood pressure, and the medication she's had to take for her lupus is causing her to go blind. Uh, yet, despite all of that, she's still the primary breadwinner in her family. She still works about 50 hours a week. She's raised four children, one of them still at home that's a special needs child. Uh, and she's the caregiver for her 90-year-old mother as well, and her husband that also has failing health. This image I call Despite It All. Uh, this is kind of a hard granite cliff face, uh, and despite it being hard granite instead of soil and not having regular rainfall, uh, here's this amazing silhouette of this pinion pine up on the ridge, and there's some other brush as well growing here. This particular image was picked by Tyler. Tyler at age 15 found his drug addict mother's suicide note. He then found her body where she'd shot herself uh, through the head. His father's in prison, and yet despite all of that, uh, Tyler's still drug-free. He's still positive. He's still coping and, and moving forward. He's, he's working on his education. And most recently, he's begun using photography as recreational art therapy to, to motivate him and, and help him struggle through the things that he may not be able to express and talk about. So overall, this, this project's going to be a, an ongoing project the rest of my life. It, it's something I'm very, very connected to and something that's very important to me. Uh, and in most ways, it's something I've been working on through my whole life. And in a lot of ways, it's transformational self-portraiture. It's, it's me representing what, what I wish I could look like to the world. You know, one of these trees conquering the impossible or one of these flowers growing out of the soil in Death Valley. Uh, but anyway, I, I appreciate you taking some time and showing some interest in my project. If you'd like to learn some more, uh, there is a website being built around the project called yourbeautifulstruggle.com. And if you want to see more of the landscape imagery, you can view that at memorycaptured.com. Uh, but thank you for giving me a little bit of your time.